Welcome friends, to another journey into the heart of wisdom and strength. Today we're embarking on a compelling quest to build the twin pillars that hold up the grand structure of personal achievement, willpower and self-discipline. Have you ever wondered how some people seem to possess an unshakable focus and determination? How do they muster the strength to push through challenges that seem insurmountable to others? The answer lies in an ancient philosophy that has stood the test of time, Stoicism. Stoicism teaches us to embrace life's hardships as opportunities to grow stronger, to control what we can, and accept what we cannot. In this video, we'll delve into the Stoic mindset and uncover practical strategies to fortify your willpower and cultivate unwavering self-discipline. Before we step into the Stoic arena though, take a moment to like this video, subscribe to our channel for a continual stream of wisdom, and ring that notification bell to ensure you never miss out on the insights that could reshape your life. Stay with us, and let's discover together how the Stoic way can elevate your resolve to heights you've never imagined. Remember, to conquer the external, we must first master the internal. Let's begin our exploration of these ancient techniques to bring forth the extraordinary willpower and self-discipline lying dormant within you. Back to basics. We're stepping back in time to visit the bustling streets and marbled halls of ancient Rome, where the seeds of Stoicism were sown. Picture the Stoic philosopher Seneca, who, despite his immense wealth and status, understood that true richness came from a strong mind, not a full purse, he once quipped that wealth is the slave of a wise man, the master of a fool. Seneca, alongside great names like the Emperor Marcus Aurelius, was a rock star of Stoicism, and these figures turned simple philosophy into an art of living. Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher king, faced battles, betrayals, and the weight of an empire, yet found solace and strength in the guiding principles of Stoicism. His personal writings, which we now lovingly refer to as meditations, give us a direct line to his thoughts on perseverance. Imagine an emperor writing reminders to himself, like the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injustice. These historical anecdotes aren't just to tickle your fancy, they showcase that the challenges we face today aren't so different from those that tested the will of the Stoics. They too, struggled with distractions, desires, and adversity, yet their legacy of discipline and mental fortitude endures through their witty, profound musings and practical strategies. To this day, Seneca's reminder that it is not because things are difficult that we do not dare. It is because we do not dare that they are difficult rings just as true and can inspire us to tackle our own fears. So, as we unravel the wisdom of Stoicism, remember that we're in good company. These weren't unreachable deities but real people who walked the earth, encountered obstacles, and used the Stoic philosophy as their secret weapon to overcome them. They left behind a roadmap for us to follow, one that leads to unshakable willpower and the self-discipline of legends. It's time to embrace their lessons and forge our path to greatness. The inner citadel, think of this as the fortress within your mind, the sanctum of your inner strength. It's the place where your resolve, your willpower, and your self-discipline are cultivated and protected. Just as a citadel in the ancient world was designed to withstand sieges and protect its inhabitants, your inner citadel serves as the stronghold against external forces and internal doubts that threaten your focus and determination. Picture this, the walls of your inner citadel are made not of stone or brick, but of your convictions, your values, and your stoic principles. These are the unyielding materials that fortify your mental defenses. Within these walls lies the essence of your character the part of you that remains steady in the storm of life's challenges. To build and strengthen your inner citadel, imagine each act of self-discipline as adding another block to the fortress. Every time you resist a short-term temptation in favor of a long-term goal, you're reinforcing the ramparts. Every mindful decision is like a sentry who stands guard, ensuring that distractions and impulses don't breach the gates. The Stoics understood that the strongest citadel required constant maintenance just as our willpower needs regular exercise to remain robust. Marcus Aurelius himself acted as both architect and mason of his inner citadel, diligently assembling resilience through reflection, writing, and the practice of Stoic teachings. Visualize your inner citadel as the place where you retreat for counsel during moments of weakness or hesitation. It's here, 
in the quiet serenity of your internal fortress, where you can listen to the wisdom of the Stoics, where you can hear Seneca's voice urging you to dare, or Marcus Aurelius reminding you to act in alignment with virtue. Your inner citadel is impervious to the chaos of the world. It's where you find the clarity and strength to say no to that which does not serve your higher purpose, and to say yes to the actions that lead to growth and fulfillment. And just like the Stoics, you are not building this citadel for the sake of hiding away. No, it's quite the opposite. Your inner citadel empowers you to step out into the world with confidence, to face whatever life throws your way, knowing that you have an indomitable reservoir of strength to draw upon. So, as we continue on this journey, hold fast to the image of your inner citadel. It stands as the embodiment of your willpower and self-discipline, a testament to your commitment to the Stoic way. It is the foundation from which you will rise to meet life's trials with courage, equanimity, and the unwavering resolve that defines the very essence of Stoicism, the power of perception. So let's talk perception. So let's talk perception, Stoic style. You see, Stoics are like mental Houdinis. They understand that it's not the situation that shackles us, but how we perceive it. It's like looking at a glass with some water in it. Is it half empty or half full? Well, a Stoic would say, thank goodness there's something to drink. Imagine you're stuck in traffic late for an important meeting. Most folks would be banging the steering wheel, huffing and puffing like a steam locomotive on the brink of eruption. But a Stoic, ah, uh, they'd see it as a prime opportunity to practice patience, maybe listen to a podcast, or simply enjoy the rare moment of stillness in a bustling world. Now, you might be wondering, how does twisting your perception help build willpower? Let me paint you a picture. Think of willpower as your mental muscle, right? Every time you shift your perception to see the positive in a predicament, you're doing a rep, flexing that willpower bicep. And boy, do those biceps grow. Take the classic example of a diet, where you're eyeballing a decadent chocolate cake that's whispering sweet nothings to your sweet tooth. The ordinary Joe might cave and wolf it down, but a stoic, equipped with their perception goggles, sees not a cake, but a test of their resolve. To them, resisting the cake is sweeter than the sugar rush, because they're buffing up their willpower six, pack. This stoic power of perception is like a superpower. It can turn a boring party where you know no one into an adventure in people, watching or a chance to make a new friend. It can transform the despair of rejection into the thrill of a challenge. After all, there's plenty of fish in the sea, and rejection is just an invitation to go fishing again. So why does this mental gymnastics work? Because my friends, by changing the narrative in our heads, we take control. We decide what a situation means to us. And that, dear viewers, is the golden ticket. It's not about pretending that the thorn in your side is a rose. It's about deciding that the thorn won't stop you from smelling the roses. And here's the catch. It's not about being delusional. Oh no. Stoics are as real as it gets. They just don't let reality get them down. They see the world through a lens of practical optimism, not sugar-coated fantasy. So next time life serves you lemons, put on your stoic shades, make some lemonade, and thank Zeus for the free vitamin C. Build that willpower fortress of yours, not with bricks of bitterness, but with beams of enlightened perception. Remember, when life hits you with a plot twist, snatch the script and pen your own narrative, stoically. Keep flexing those perception muscles, and watch as your willpower soars to Herculean heights. And with that, esteemed viewers, we wrap up our dive into the stoic power of perception. If you've enjoyed this mind-bending episode, smash that like button like it's a challenge to your stoic calm. Don't forget to subscribe for your regular dose of ancient wisdom, and hit that notification bell with the finesse of a stoic sage. Stick around as we continue our trek through the hallowed halls of Stoicism, and together, we'll turn the ordinary into the extraordinary. Muscle up the mind. If you thought working out was just for the body, then let me introduce you to the Stoic gym for the mind. Just like hitting the weights pumps up your physical muscles, there are exercises, mental push-ups and brain burpees, if you will, that can bulk up your mental resilience. To build willpower, you've got to muscle up the mind. You see, every challenge you face, Every obstacle you overcome, and every temptation you resist, acts like a rep in your mental workout routine. 
And in this stoic training ground, the weights are made of our daily choices, the resistance from our habits, and the bars loaded with our attitudes towards life's ups and downs. Let's start with those mental push-ups. These are your basic, no equipment, necessary exercises. Picture this, you're about to hit the snooze button on your alarm for the fifth time. Instead, you make the conscious choice to rise and shine. That right there, that's a mental push-up. You've just pushed against the weight of comfort, and with each morning you do it, you're strengthening your willpower. Now, onto those brain burpees. They're the combination move of the mind. Say you're working on a project, and that familiar itch to check your phone creeps up on you. In that split second you have a choice. Give in to the distraction, or keep your focus. By choosing focus you're jumping into action, dropping down to tackle the task, and thrusting your willpower to new heights. The beauty of these mental workouts is that they're not confined to a gym. They're happening all the time, in every decision you make. And just like physical exercise, the more consistent you are, the stronger you'll get. It won't be easy, muscle growth never is. But the Stoics knew that it was through continual practice and perseverance that the mind becomes mightier. Now it's important to avoid mental overtraining. Every athlete knows to listen to their body and give it time to recover. Similarly, your mind needs rest. The Stoics weren't about non-stop grind. They believed in balance. Use periods of relaxation and reflection as your mental cooldowns, allowing lessons learned to sink in and solidify. And never underestimate the power of visualization in your mental strengthening regimen. Just as an athlete imagines themselves scoring the winning goal or crossing the finish line, you can visualize yourself exercising self-restraint or staying true to your goals. Picture yourself passing the test of willpower with flying colors, and you're prepping your mind for the real life lifts. My fellow seekers of strength, remember that every choice is a rep, every challenge is a set, and every day is a chance to train. Your mind is the most powerful muscle you have. It's time to give it the workout it deserves. Are you feeling pumped up yet? Ready to get those mental gains? Then hit the like button as if it were your next rep, with intention and vigor. Subscribe for more mental fitness tips and hit the notification bell as you would enter the next set, with purpose and focus. Join us as we continue to explore the stoic strategies that will make your willpower unbreakable. Keep flexing that mental muscle, and let's advance together towards a life of discipline that would make Seneca and Marcus Aurelius proud. Confronting comfort Aurelius proud. Confronting comfort, let's wade into the waters of discomfort, fellow travelers on the stoic path. This is where we turn the heat up a notch and start to embrace the concept of voluntary discomfort. You know, that thing we all love to hate. It's tango time with the unfamiliar and the slightly uneasy. So, why not have a bit of fun with it? Picture this, you're cozied up in your favorite chair, wrapped in the warm embrace of a familiar routine. The TV is on, and it's the same show you've watched a thousand times. Comfort. Check. Familiarity. Check. Growth. Well, not so much. Enter the stoic practice of leaving the comfort zone. Now. Imagine flipping the script. Turn the TV off, and instead pick up a book, perhaps one about stoicism or another genre you've never genre you've never explored. Feel the initial resistance that tugged to go back to the show you know and love. But no, you've chosen the path of the stoics, and that means pushing through the discomfort. Or, let's get physical with it. Say you've been eyeing that cold shower trend, but the thought of it sends a shiver down your spine. The stoics would nod in approval. They practiced what they preached after all. So, you twist that tap to cold and step in. Boy, It's a shock to the system, but you're now playing the role of a stoic soldier, braving the icy torrents not out of necessity, but because you've chosen to challenge comfort's grip on you. And what about social situations? Perhaps there's a networking event or a community class you've been dodging. What's the stoic move? You guessed it. Go to the event. Start a conversation with a stranger, feel the awkwardness, embrace the stumbling words, and then watch as they transform into a flowing dialogue. By stepping out of what's cozy you start to build a bridge over the moat of comfort, leading to the lands of growth and resilience. This is stoicism in action. 
It's a live simulation where every step out of the comfort zone is a level up for your willpower. So dear friends and stoic warriors, as you go about your days, seek out these opportunities to voluntarily choose discomfort. Why? Because it is in these moments that your willpower flexes its muscles the hardest. Each challenge you willingly accept acts as a forge, heating and hammering your self-discipline into something stronger, something more resilient. The Stoics believed that the person you become on the other side of these discomforts is worth the temporary unease. And they weren't wrong. It's through overcoming the small daily discomforts that we prepare ourselves for life's greater challenges. It's time to step out of that comfy chair and stride boldly into the slightly chilly waters of growth. And always remember, the comfort zone is a beautiful place, but nothing ever grows there. If you're ready to start confronting comfort and pushing your boundaries, Show us your warrior spirit by hitting the like button. Subscribe and ring that notification bell to join our stoic legion, where we sharpen our minds and steal our wills. Stay tuned as we continue this journey, equipping you with the stoic tools to conquer life's challenges and flourish in the face of adversity. Let's embrace discomfort together and watch as our collective strength reaches new heights, desires and distractions. Alright, let's address the elephants in the room desires and distractions. These sneaky beasts have a way of derailing even the most disciplined stoic train. So, how do we tackle them? With a bit of stoic savvy, we can put them on trial and reclaim our focus. It's time for some fun sketches and mock trials, stoicism style. Picture yourself as a stoic judge in the courtroom of your mind. Desires and distractions are the defendants, and you're about to lay down some philosophical law. Let's take a common desire, the craving for, let's say, junk food. It's late at night, and you're feeling snacky. Enter the desire, strutting in with a bag of chips. As the judge, you call the desire to the witness stand. Why should I indulge you? You ask. The desire smirks and says, because I taste amazing, and you deserve a treat. But, ah, uh, here's where you pull out your stoic gavel and remind the court that true satisfaction comes from self-control, not fleeting pleasures. Case dismissed, desire overruled. Next up, distractions. Your phone pings with the siren call of social media notifications, and a distraction grinning with every like, share, and retweet. Again you demand an explanation, why should I pay attention to you instead of my important tasks? The distraction stammers, because I'm immediate gratification. But you, the unflappable stoic judge, deliver a verdict grounded in long-term thinking. Immediate gratification does not align with my greater goals. You declare, and with a swift gavel strike, you mute the phone and return to your work. Another distraction bites the dust. These mock trials are more than just amusing mental exercises. They're a way to practice the stoic art of questioning your impulses. It's about holding each desire and distraction up to the light of reason and asking, is this serving my higher purpose, or is it merely a temporary temptation? By doing so, you're sharpening your mind and fortifying your willpower. And here's a pro tip, make these trials a habit. Turn them into playful sketches in your head, complete with characters and dialogues. Maybe that desire for junk food has a signature catchphrase, or the distraction of your phone does a little dance. The more vivid and fun you make these scenarios, the more engaging and effective they'll be. Remember, desires and distractions aren't evil villains. They're just part of the human experience. But by confronting them with stoic techniques, we can ensure they don't run the show. We can turn the courtroom into a stage where we're the director and desires and distractions become players in our grand play of self-discipline. So when you sense those desires and distractions creeping in, Summon your inner stoic judge, and get ready to rule with wisdom and wit. And if you've enjoyed this playful take on stoic self-control, don't forget to show some love by smashing that like button. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep up with our journey through the stoic way of life. Together, we'll continue to train our minds, hone our willpower, and become the masters of our desires and distractions. Stay tuned for more ancient wisdom that still packs a punch in the modern world. The Stoic Pause. Now, let's introduce a secret weapon in the Stoic arsenal. The Stoic Pause. This is not your average pause. 
This is a moment of epic proportions, where you take the reins of your mind before making a decision. Think of it as a supercharged timeout where you channel your inner philosopher. Imagine you're about to make an impulsive purchase. It's a shiny new gadget and, oh boy it's calling your name. But wait, before you whip out that credit card, engage the stoic pause. Freeze the scene. Envision a wise stoic philosopher, maybe Seneca or Epictetus, materializing beside you, raising an eyebrow in quiet contemplation. What are the virtues at play here? They ask. Is this purchase aligned with your values? Or is it just an impulse seeking instant gratification? During this stoic pause, you take a step back to evaluate your motives. You ask yourself, will this item contribute to my well-being and personal growth? Or will it just clutter my life and mind? It's not about denying yourself pleasures but about choosing them wisely. You might be thinking, that's all cool, but is talking to imaginary philosophers normal? And to that, I say, absolutely. It's all about creating a playful mental space where you can have a dialogue with the best of the Stoics. They become your compassionate advisors, guiding you towards making choices that serve your long-term happiness and self-discipline. But don't think the Stoic pause is limited to shopping dilemmas. Oh no, it applies to all facets of life. Picture yourself about to splurge on an extra-large pizza when you've already had a full meal. Or maybe you're considering skipping a workout just because it's a little cold outside. The stoic pause is there, offering you a moment of clarity and the space to choose the path of self-mastery over the path of least resistance. So, how do we practice this powerful tactic? Start small. Next time you feel a rush of impatience, about to say something you might regret, just pause, take a deep breath. What would a stoic do? They'd likely advise you to respond with kindness and rationality, rather than with heated emotion. As you grow accustomed to the stoic pause, it becomes second nature. You'll start to find joy in the practice, almost like a game. Each pause is a victory, a tangible sign of your growing self-discipline and willpower. And there you have it, my fellow seekers of wisdom, a practical tool that's as enjoyable as it is, transformative. The Stoic Pause is your trusty sidekick in the epic tale of your life, always ready to jump in and give you that moment of critical reflection that can make all the difference. Now, if this Stoic superpower has piqued your interest and you're eager to wield it in your daily life, don't hesitate to hit that like button as a sign of your commitment to the cause. Subscribe and ring that notification bell with the poise of a Stoic Sage ready for the next revelation. Stay with us as we uncover more stoic secrets that will unlock the true potential of your willpower and self-discipline. Let's continue this journey hand in hand, transforming our impulses into intentional actions. One stoic pause at a time. Voluntary discomfort. The stoic ice bath challenge. All right, folks, brace yourselves for a chilly dive into the world of voluntary discomfort. You've heard of ice bucket challenges and polar bear plunges. But have you ever heard of the Stoic Ice Bath Challenge? It's like taking a plunge into the Arctic Ocean. Only your bathtub is the sea and your willpower is the ship navigating the frosty waters. So what's this all about, you ask? It's simple. The Stoics believed that by purposely putting ourselves through discomfort, we could steel our minds against the inevitable hardships of life. It's like weightlifting for the soul, and boy, does it build some serious mental muscles. The Stoic Ice Bath Challenge goes like this. Fill your tub with water colder than a penguin's beak. Throw in enough ice to make a polar bear nod in approval. And then, you guessed it, take the plunge. As you submerge yourself in this icy abyss, your mind will scream. What on earth are we doing? But that's when the magic happens. You'll focus, you'll breathe, and you'll harness every ounce of stoic strength to remain calm and composed in the face of this self-imposed glacial gauntlet. Now, I can hear some of you saying, but why would I do that to myself on purpose? Excellent question. The answer, dear viewers, is to harden your willpower like a diamond. Every second you spend shivering in that tub is a second spent training your mind to endure, to persist, and to emerge victorious over the screeching sirens of comfort. But let's add a fun twist. Stoicism doesn't have to be all stern and grave. Let's make it entertaining. As you sit in your ice bath, why not narrate your experience like a wildlife documentary? Here we have the wild stoic, in its natural habitat, 
braving the elements with the stoicism of a, well, of a stoic. It's about taking life's lemons and freezing them for a zesty snow cone. This challenge isn't just about enduring cold water. It's about embracing life's curveballs with a smile and a healthy dose of laughter. After all, if you can laugh in the face of an ice bath, what can't you tackle with a grin? Remember, the goal here isn't to turn yourself into a human popsicle. It's about proving to yourself that you have the power to face discomfort head on and not just survive, but thrive. It's about teaching your body and mind that you are in control and that with a little dose of stoic humor, any challenge can be a source of growth and, believe it or not, joy. So, are you ready to take on the stoic ice bath challenge? Share your frosty feats and laughter with us. And if you've enjoyed this quirky twist on a stoic practice, warm up those fingers and tap that like button. Subscribe for more of these mind-freezing adventures and click the notification bell, so you don't miss out on any of our warm-hearted wisdom. Join us as we continue to laugh in the face of discomfort and bolster our willpower, the stoic way. Let's turn the world into our playground, one icy challenge at a time. Say no to say yes. Ever wondered how to juggle the art of refusal with the grace of a stoic sage? It's like being a goalkeeper in the game of life, knowing when to block a shot and when to let it glide past the net. In the realm of stoicism, the power of saying no is a strategic move to ultimately say yes to the things that truly matter. Let's spin a tale. Imagine two animated characters. Impulsio, the embodiment of every fleeting whim and desire, always zipping around with another must, have or must, do. Then there's focused Fred, our stoic hero who sees beyond the noise. Impulsio shows up with tickets to every movie, every concert, and every game. But Fred, he's got his eyes on the prize, which in this case is a big shiny goal he's been working towards. Every time Impulsio comes a knocking with distractions dressed in glitz, Fred, with a friendly but firm wave, says no. But here's the twist. He's not just rejecting the offer. He's affirming his commitment to his long-term vision. With each no, comes a mental image of Fred saying yes to his own dreams and aspirations. It's like turning down a slice of cake today to savor the whole dessert of success tomorrow. And as our animated adventures unfold, we see focused Fred progressing, growing stronger and more disciplined. Meanwhile, Impulsio is exhausted from chasing every shiny object. The contrast couldn't be clearer. Fred's nose are paving the way for a triumphant yes. Now let's bring in some funny memes that hit the nail on the head. Picture a meme with a guru meditating, a serene smile on his face, and the caption. When you say, no, to distractions like a stoic boss. It gets a chuckle, but it also drives the point home. Every no is not a missed chance. It's a step towards something greater. Saying no isn't about being a party pooper. It's about being a purpose protector. It's the silent guardian of your time and energy, ensuring that trivialities don't hijack the spotlight from your true goals. It's about being intentional with your choices, carving out a path with the sword of discernment. So, the next time you're tempted to splurge on something inconsequential, remember focused Fred. Imagine that meme and channel your inner stoic goalkeeper. Let the unimportant requests fly by and reserve your yes for those goals that set your soul on fire. And that, my wise viewers, is how you master the stoic strategy of saying no to say yes. If this epic battle of wills has inspired you, then give us a thumbs up. Smash that subscribe button to join the legion of stoic warriors and ring the notification bell with the precision of a philosopher choosing his words. Together, let's continue to navigate the trials of desire, armed with the shield of no and the spear of yes, marching towards the greatness that awaits us all. Stoic time management, friends, have you ever felt like time is slipping through? Your fingers like sand in an hourglass. Well. Buckle up because we're about to put a stoic spin on this enigma and revolutionize the way you seize each day. It's time for some stoic time management. And just for giggles, let's throw in a wacky timer or countdown for effect. Because why not? Let's make time management as thrilling as a race against the clock in a game show. Now, picture this. A funky, oversized timer ticking away, each second amplified with a humorous boing sound. 
to keep you on your toes. That's our whimsical reminder that time is precious, and we need to use it with intention and purpose, just like the Stoics would. A Stoic approaches time like a golden opportunity, not a relentless foe. They view each moment as a chance to practice virtue, to pursue self-improvement, and to contribute to the common good. So how do you adopt this mindset? First, visualize your day as a pie chart, segmented into colorful slices. Each slice represents a task or activity, and it's your job to allocate the slices like a wise stoic chef. Now, here's the fun part. Imagine an eccentric game show host narrating your day. And on your left, we have a hefty slice of work followed by a sliver of reflection. And oh, look at that. A generous portion dedicated to helping others. This light-hearted take on a stoic structured day keeps you invested and entertained as you manage your time. Next, think of your to-do list as a series of mini-games, each with its own quirky timer. Need to send some emails. Set the wacky countdown for 30 minutes and watch as the seconds going by. It's like you're defusing a bomb in a spy movie, except the only thing exploding will be your productivity. And don't forget, a stoic values quality over quantity. When that countdown beeps its final Boeing, you should aim not only to have completed the task but to have done it with your full attention and effort. It's not about rushing through but rather about maximizing the moment, fully engaged and undistracted. But here's where stoicism really spices things up. Sprinkle in moments of reflection throughout your day. Allocate a few of those wacky timer sessions to ponder life's bigger questions. As the clock ticks, ponder, what have I done well today? Where can I improve? How have I contributed to the world around me? These moments are like secret levels in your daily time, management game, unlocking a deeper sense of fulfillment. So my time, traveling companions, as the buzzer sounds off on this section, remember that managing time the stoic way is about more than crossing items off a list. It's about making each tick of the clock count, infusing every task with purpose, and sprinkling a dash of amusement into the mix. If you're ready to tackle time with a Stoic's wisdom and a game show contestant's enthusiasm, then give us a hearty thumbs up. Smash that subscribe button just in time as the buzzer sounds and hit the notification bell with the timing of a world-class athlete. Join us as we continue to unravel the wisdom of the Stoics, one zany timer countdown at a time. Let's make the race against the clock an adventure worth every second. The dichotomy of control. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to spotlight a central theme in Stoicism that's as game, changing as the final round in a nail-biting game show. We're talking about the dichotomy of control, the ultimate Stoic strategy that can pivot your life from what on earth is happening, to I've got this, faster than a contestant buzzing in an answer. So prepare for a thrilling segment where we break down this concept in a way that'll make you want to spin the wheel of fortune and see where it lands. Let's set the stage with a colorful spinning wheel, each section representing aspects of our lives. You've got health, wealth, relationships, and so forth, some within your control, and others, well, not so much. The stoic game is to focus on the slices you can actually influence, and let go of those that spin outside your grasp. Just like a savvy player knows the game is played with the cards in their hand, not the ones still in the deck. Now, imagine our charismatic game show host, a mix between a stoic philosopher and a television star, explaining the rules. Contestants, you can only place your bets on the slices within your control. Will it be actions? Choices? Maybe opinions? Remember, fortune's wheel spins without your command. Place your chips wisely. In this metaphorical game show called Life, the dichotomy of control teaches us to invest our efforts where we can actually make a difference. As the wheel spins and lands on traffic, the host reminds you, ah, not within your control, better luck next spin. But when it lands on attitude he exclaims, yes, that's your territory, double down on that one. But stoicism isn't just about knowing what to control, it's also about the graceful art of letting go of what we can't. So when the wheel spins out of your favor, say it's pouring rain on your outdoor event, our host prompts you, no use betting on weather. Shift your stakes to creativity and find an indoor solution. The beauty of the dichotomy of control game is that it's not about winning or losing. It's about playing smart, focusing your energy and finding peace regardless of the outcome. 
It teaches you to be the contestant that walks away smiling, prize or no prize, because you've played your part with poise and wisdom. So, my friends, as we draw this segment to a close, envision yourself stepping up to the grand wheel of life with the confidence of a stoic. Give it a whirl knowing that some things will remain beyond your grasp. But as long as you're betting on the slices you can control, you're already a champion. If you're ready to spin the wheel with the discernment of a stoic sage, then show us some love by hitting that like button with gusto. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, as if you're ringing in for the million dollar question. Stay tuned as we ride the game show carousel of stoicism, where every spin brings us closer to mastering the art of control in our extraordinary lives. Let the games begin, and may the odds of wisdom be ever in your favor. Embrace the obstacle. Imagine life as a grand, sprawling obstacle course. You're geared up, heart pounding with anticipation, ready to navigate the twists, turns and hurdles ahead. This is where we put the stoic mantra. The obstacle is the ways into play, transforming every barrier into a stepping stone on the path to victory. So there you are, at the starting line of this epic course, with obstacles as varied as the stars. Some are towering walls, others deep ditches, and then there are those sneaky, muddy patches designed to slow you down. But in the stoic obstacle race, each of these challenges is not just a mere hindrance, they are opportunities in disguise. As you approach the first wall, towering and daunting, the crowd holds their breath. But instead of daunting you, it fuels your fire. You take a deep breath and channel your inner stoic champion. This wall represents a difficult project at work, a tough conversation, or any personal setback you faced. With a running leap, you hurl yourself up, fingers grasping the top. Pulling yourself over, you're not just clearing a physical barrier, you're proving to yourself that you can overcome life's walls with the same vigor. Next, you're faced with a series of ropes swinging over a gaping pit, the pit of uncertainty, fear, rejection. Each rope demands trust in timing, just like the decisions you make in life. You swing from one to the next, feeling the rush of air and adrenaline. You might miss a grip, you might slip, but you climb back up, undeterred because Stoics know every fall is just another lesson, another chance to swing stronger. And oh, the muddy patches. They're like those sticky situations that try to bog down your spirit. The doubts, the naysayers, the internal critics. But as you slog through, feet heavy but heart determined, you remember Seneca's words, difficulties strengthen the mind, as labor does the body. Each step becomes more purposeful, each stride a testament to your tenacity. In this stoic obstacle course, there's even a balance beam teetering high above the ground, it represents the delicate act of balancing your emotions. You inch across, focused and calm, because the Stoics taught us that equilibrium in the soul is just as crucial as balance in the body. And now, the final hurdle, a leap of faith across a wide chasm. This is the test of courage, the gamble we all take when chasing our dreams. You back up, take a running start, and launch into the air. Knowing that whether you land safely on the other side or clamber up from the depths, you've embraced the essence of the obstacle, is the way. Every challenge is a chance to grow, to adapt, and to emerge not just unscathed, but emboldened. Embracing the obstacle, my fellow stoic runners, is about transforming trials into triumphs, barriers into breakthroughs. It's the exhilarating realization that the course itself holds the keys to your success. Are you ready to turn every obstacle into a way forward? Then let's conquer this course together. Hit that like button if you're with me, subscribe to join our stoic marathon, and ring that notification bell to keep pace with our journey. As we leap over life's walls and cross its tightropes, remember, in the exhilarating obstacle course of life, the stoics run beside us, whispering that every hurdle is just another opportunity to soar, journaling journeys. Now, let's venture into the delightful world of stoic reflective journaling, but strap in because we're going to do it with a twist. Think dear diary but with a dose of stoic wit sprinkled in. Picture this, a segment where we crack open the dusty tomes of self-reflection and add a dash of humor to the mix, because even a stoic knows that a cheerful heart is the best medicine. So imagine you're settling down for the evening, armed with nothing but a quill or a pen, because, let's be honest, quills are hard to come by and your trusty journal. You kick off with, Dear Diary, 
Today I practiced the stoic art of turning traffic into tranquility. Or perhaps something like, Dear Diary, encountered an irksome character today, and I'd like to thank him for the free patience training session. You see, reflective journaling, stoic style, isn't just a solemn recounting of the day's events. It's a lively dialogue with yourself. You're the playwright of your life's comedy, drafting scenes where every frustration becomes a punchline, and each setback, a setup for a witty comeback. Let's have some fun with it. Doodle in the margins if that's your thing. Scribble stick figures of you conquering the day, complete with speech bubbles filled with stoic quotes and friendly banter. Oh look, it's me, calmly sipping herbal tea while chaos unfolds around. Classic stoic moo. In this Dear Diary segment, you're weaving light-hearted tales where the mundane becomes amusing. The leaky faucet, an impromptu stoic lesson in the persistent flow of time, that long queue at the coffee shop, a chance to stand and marvel at the symphony of life, all while drafting mental captions for the imagined social media posts of your fellow queue members. As you journal this way, you'll find yourself looking forward to this daily rendezvous with your diary. It's not just recounting the day, it's relishing the quirks of existence through a stoic lens. It becomes a treasure trove of personal anecdotes, a collection of days that forms a narrative of growth, resilience, and yes, humor. And remember, stoic journaling isn't a solo adventure. It's like having a silent debate with the greats. Seneca might chime in with a quip, or Epictetus might interject with a sobering thought. Your journal becomes a canvas for this timeless dialogue, with every entry a stroke of self-discovery painted with a smile. So, my journaling journeymen and journeywomen, let's embrace this reflective practice with the levity of a stoic who's seen it all and still finds reasons to chuckle. Thread the needle of self-awareness with the yarn of humor, and watch as your tapestry of personal growth becomes not only wise, but wonderfully warm. If you're chuckling along and ready to embark on your own journaling journey, don't forget to hit that like button with the joy of a stoic finding humor in the everyday. Subscribe and ring that notification bell with the enthusiasm of a philosopher penning their next revelation. Stay with us, keep journaling, and let's transform the simple act of diary keeping into an epic saga of self-reflection and joyous jest. Together, we'll fill the pages of our lives with stories that echo through the ages, one dear diary entry at a time. Mindful mornings, picture this. Your alarm clock blares. A bugle call to arms that signals the dawn of a new day. This isn't just any morning routine. This is Mindful Mornings, the stoic boot camp that would make even Marcus Aurelius salute with respect. So let's lace up our sandals and march into the day with a routine that's equal parts discipline and delightful absurdity. As the sun peeks over the horizon, you leap out of bed with the gusto of a seasoned centurion. First on the agenda, a moment of gratitude. Thank the stars, or the universe, or your bed for holding you through the night. A hearty thank you bed, is the perfect mix of sincerity and silliness to kickstart your morning. Next up, it's time for meditation, but not the kind where you simply sit and breathe. No, this is stoic meditation with a comical twist. You assume the lotus position, and begin to ponder the great stoic questions, all while balancing a pancake on your head because, why not? It's a challenge that tests your focus and your ability to not burst into laughter. After achieving enlightenment, and possibly a pancake breakfast, it's on to physical exercises, but with a fun stoic flair, picture doing push-ups while reciting Epictetus quotes or lunges paired with Seneca's musings. Every rep is not just strengthening your body, but your connection to stoic wisdom. It's a philosopher-sized routine that could only come from the most buoyant of stoic minds, now fully invigorated. We hit the cold shower, but instead of grimacing through the icy cascade, we belt out stoic aphorisms as if we're auditioning for an opera. What stands in the way becomes the way. You sing at the top of your lungs, hitting notes that would make the muses weep. It's a test of will, a baptism in the waters of willpower, and quite the spectacle. If you ask your bewildered rubber ducky, post-shower, it's straight to journaling, but we keep it light. Scribble down your goals for the day, sandwiched between doodles of a stoic beard and arrows pointing to your most ambitious aspirations. It's a visual and verbal map of where you're headed, charted with a cartographer's precision and a child's playfulness. To wrap up our mindful morning's routine, we sit down for a healthy breakfast, but every bite is taken with intentional thought. 
chew in silence, reflecting on the nutrients fueling your body, or if you're feeling jocular, narrate your meal like a grand banquet in honor of Jupiter. And there you have it, dear viewers, a stoic morning routine laden with discipline and dripping with a dash of good humor. It sets the tone for a day where challenges are met with both strength and a smile, where every task is infused with a zest for life and a nod to the Stoics of old who surely had a chuckle now and then. If you're ready to embrace the day with a routine that would make the ancients proud, go ahead and smash that like button with the force of a gladiator's swing. Subscribe for more unconventional wisdom and hit the notification bell with the precision of an archer striking his target. Together, Let's march into our mindful mornings, infusing stoicism with a spirit of joy and conquering the day ahead with laughter on our lips and resilience in our hearts. Visualize like a stoic. Welcome back, stoic enthusiasts and visionaries. Today, we're diving into the vivid world of visualization, stoic style. But we're not just going to talk about it. We're going to bring it to life with a hilarious fantasy V's, reality skit that'll have you both enlightened and in stitches. Picture this. Our main character is Steve, a modern-day stoic who's about to employ the ancient technique of visualization to tackle his biggest fear, public speaking. In his fantasy, Steve steps onto the stage, the crowd erupts in applause, and he delivers his speech with the charisma and confidence of a seasoned orator. Picture him in a toga, for effect, because in fantasies, anything goes. But hold on, let's rewind and see how a stoic really prepares. In reality, Steve knows better. He sits quietly before the event and visualizes not only the best case scenario, but also the challenges. What if he stumbles over his words? What if the crowd is less than thrilled? What if his toga malfunctions? Here's where the stoic visualization shines. Steve imagines overcoming each obstacle with grace and composure. As he steps into reality, the true test begins. The crowd is sparse. His introduction is met with polite, rather than enthusiastic, clapping, and someone in the third row is snoring. But Steve is unshaken. Thanks to his visualization practice, he's prepared for this exact scenario. He channels his inner Marcus Aurelius, takes a deep breath, and begins. Midway through the speech, Steve's nightmare unfolds. A hiccup in his delivery. The fantasy Steve might have fled the stage, but not our stoic Steve. He pauses, chuckles, and with a twinkle in his eye says, Ah, even Cicero had his hiccups. The crowd chuckles with him. Instead of faltering, he turns the hiccup into a shared moment of levity. As Steve concludes, the applause is genuine, if subdued, and he walks off stage with a sense of achievement. Our fantasy V's. Reality skit closes with the real victory. Steve's growth. It's not about the roar of the crowd or a flawless performance. It's about facing fear with preparation, humility, and a touch of humor. So there we have it folks, a skit that captures the essence of stoic visualization. It's about expecting the best but preparing for the rest, and finding humor in the humanity of it all. Remember, when life throws you on stage, visualize like a stoic, and you may just find yourself enjoying the spotlight, imperfections and all. If you're ready to tackle your fears with a smile and some stoic wisdom, give that like button a standing ovation, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell with the precision of a perfectly timed punchline. Stay tuned for more stoic strategies that will arm you with resilience and maybe even a few laughs. Together, let's visualize our way to success. Laughter ringing louder than any hiccup along the way. Progress, not perfection. Alright, fellow philosophers of life, let's groove to the beat of progress, stoic style, where the journey is the destination, and every misstep is just part of the dance. Imagine if you will, a vibrant progress bar on the screen, inching forward with each tale of triumph and tribulation I share. This isn't just any progress bar, it's a stoic's guide to growth, complete with quirky animations and a dash of comic relief for good measure. So here's the scene, our progress bar is sitting at a comfortable 10, a humble nod to the fact that we're all beginners in some aspect of our lives. Picture that bar with a little cartoon stoic, let's call him Progress Pete cheering us on from the sidelines. He's got a beard that would make Epictetus proud and a smile that says, you've got this, even if you've just tripped over your own sandals. Now, let me tell you about the time I decided to learn Spanish. Day one, my progress bar was a flicker of light in a sea of no hablo espanol. 
I enthusiastically threw around sigh. And no. Sometimes in the entirely wrong context. Burning bewildered looks that could fill a blooper's reel. But, undeterred, I persevered. And progress Pete, inched forward. Now at a solid 25. Fast forward a few weeks, and I'm trying to tell a charming story about my dog. Instead, I accidentally profess my undying love for a ham sandwich. Yes, my friends. It was a linguistic fumble worthy of a facepalm. But it was also a step towards fluency. The progress bar crept up to 50s amid chuckles and a newfound appreciation for sandwiches. Now, here's the twist. Our progress bar isn't a straight line. It zigzags, loops, and sometimes doubles back on itself. It's like watching a cartoon cat chase a laser pointer across the screen. But that's the beauty of it. Each zany turn represents a lesson learned, a challenge faced, and the resilience that comes from embracing the unpredictable stoic path to self-improvement. One fine day, after months of practice and possibly swearing allegiance to more sandwiches, I hold an entire conversation in Spanish without summoning any unintentional declarations of love for inanimate objects. The crowd goes wild. Well, at least in my head. And progress Pete jumps for joy as we hit a glorious 70. 5. In a true stoic twist, perfection isn't the goal. It's about rejoicing in the small victories, laughing at the mishaps, and realizing that even at 99s, there's always room to grow, improve, and maybe accidentally flirt with a pastry or two. So dear viewers, as we watch our animated stoic progress bar, let it be a reminder that life is an endless climb up Mount Progress. And as long as we're climbing, laughing, and occasionally sliding down to climb again, we're living the stoic dream. If you've enjoyed this lighthearted romp through the hills and valleys of progress, then give that like button a high five for effort. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell with the finesse of a stoic sage, chuckling at his own folk pass. Stay with us, and let's continue to celebrate every step of progress, embracing the ever, so stoic mantra. It's not about being perfect. It's about getting better, one joyful misadventure at a time. Review and reflect. Welcome back, my stoic comrades and seekers of self-mastery, as the sun sets on another day of trials and triumphs, it's time for our most sacred of stoic rituals, the evening reflection. But fear not, this isn't your run. But fear not, this isn't your run. Introspection. Oh no. We're spicing it up with our very own stoic talk show, where we dissect the day's events with humor, honesty, and that ever so cheeky stoic charm. Cue the imaginary applause as we welcome you to the stage of your own mind. I'm your host, Sage Seneca, joined by the ever-resilient Marcus, the wise Epictetus, and the special guest of the evening, you. Yes, you are the star of the show. And together we're going to review your day in style. So, let's kick things off with the hot seat segment. We turn the spotlight on the day's challenges. What tests of willpower did you face? A tempting slice of cake at the office. The lure of the snooze button. Or perhaps the siren song of procrastination. Whatever it was, let's hear it. And more importantly, let's celebrate your response. Did you falter? Did you conquer? Remember, in our talk show, every answer is a step towards understanding. Marcus, always the philosopher king, chimes in with a thoughtful nod, reminding us to judge yourself not by what you achieved, but by what you were capable of doing. Ah, the wisdom that resonates in this fictional studio of our minds. Epictetus, never one to mince words, urges us to reflect on what was within our control, and what wasn't. He's the voice of reason, the reminder that some things are like wild winds. We can't command them, but we can to command them, but we can adjust our sails. And now, the crowd favorite. The moment of mirth reel. This is where we replay the day's bloopers with a stoic twist. That stub toe that sent you hopping. The accidental coffee spill that looked like a Jackson Pollock on your shirt. Let's pause and laugh. Not because we're clumsy, but because life is an unpredictable dance. And sometimes we step on our own feet. As our show comes to a close, we reflect on the lessons learned. This is the crucial part. The takeaway. The wisdom wrapped in the day's shenanigans. We ponder the insights gained. The strength gathered and the willpower fortified through every little choice we made. And there it is, the grand finale. 
we look back at the progress bar of the day, not just the leaps and bounds, but the stumbles and hesitations, all part of the grand scheme. We acknowledge the growth, the resilience, and the unwavering spirit that kept us pressing forward. We close our stoic talk show with a round of applause, a pat on the back, and a heartfelt, well done. So, as you tuck yourself into the embrace of the night, with a head full of reflections and a heart full of courage, remember this talk show in your mind. It's your personal theater, where every evening is a chance to review, reflect, and ready yourself for tomorrow's spotlight. Before you drift off to the land of dreams, where stoic sages might offer midnight musings, hit that like button as a nod to your own dedication. Subscribe to channel your inner Seneca, and click that notification bell with the poise of Epictetus facing fate. Join us again, as we journey through the stoic way, transforming each reflection into a stepping stone on the path to unwavering willpower and the self-discipline of legends. Good night, and may your dreams be as insightful as our stoic talk show. The Willpower Reserve, ladies and gentlemen, Rev up your engines because we're about to explore the fascinating concept of why power as a finite resource. But let's add some octane to this journey with a visual that's as enlightening as it is entertaining. A fuel gauge graphic with a fun twist. Imagine your willpower as a vintage car's fuel gauge, complete with quirky dials and playful pings. This isn't just any fuel gauge, it's the dashboard of your determination, the meter of your mental might. And right at the center of that dashboard, grinning back at you, is our animated friend, Willpower Willy, the tiny stoic mechanic who keeps your tank in check. As we go about our day, making decisions and resisting temptations, Willpower Willy keeps an eye on the gauge. With every challenge we face, we burn a little mental fuel. Skip that extra helping at dinner? Ping! The needle nudges down a notch. Push through a tough workout. Ping! Down goes the gauge a smidgen more. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Unlike a car that runs empty when the gauge hits E, our willpower tank has a secret. It's refillable, and it's all about how we manage it. There's willpower willy, waving the fuel can with a knowing smile, because he understands the stoic art of refueling. How do we do it? By breaking tasks into smaller, manageable goals, sprinkling in short breaks and power naps, and practicing positive self-talk, we keep topping up that tank. It's like stopping at the quirky gas station of life, where each pump is labeled with actions that rejuvenate our resolve. Five-minute meditation, laugh break, gratitude fill up. Our fuel gauge might teeter towards ease after a long stretch of highway, but with some stoic strategy and a few chuckles along the way, we can cruise through the day without breaking down on the roadside of exhaustion. And let's not forget our trusty willy, who reminds us to check the gauge and take those much needed pit stops before we hit empty. So remember, my stoic road trippers, your willpower may be finite, but with the right maintenance, your journey need not be interrupted. Watch that gauge, listen for the pings, and when you see willpower willy waving his fuel can, take a moment to refuel. If you're enjoying this scenic route through the landscapes of stoicism and practical psychology, show us some fuel-saving love by tapping that like button. Hit subscribe for more roadworthy wisdom, and ring the notification bell so you never miss a chance to top up your tank. Buckle up, as we continue to navigate the winding roads of self-discipline, always mindful of our white power reserve. Drive on, my friends, and may your willpower tank be ever bountiful. Patience and persistence, gather around stoic enthusiasts, as we shift our gaze to the often overlooked but immensely powerful duo of virtues. Patience and persistence. But let's not just nod solemnly at their importance. Let's bring them to life with a chuckle. Inducing snail race animation that'll have us both pondering and chuckling about our slow-moving yet determined mollusk friends. Picture this. On the starting line, we have two snails, Patience Pete and Persistence Polly, both decked out in stoic togas and tiny laurel wreaths. They're ready to embark on the most epic race of the season. The great stoic snail derby, the track ahead is long, winding, and sprinkled with obstacles that would make Aesop's hair balk in disbelief. As the starting leaf falls, because flags are just too fast for this crowd, our snail contenders inch forward with all the urgency of a philosopher pondering the meaning of life. Patience Pete, 
glides along at a pace that would test even Zeno's patience, his eyes fixed on the finish line with serene determination. Beside him, persistence pulley oozes willpower, her antenna perked, leaving a glistening trail of never give up in her wake. The crowd, a mix of tortoises, sloths, and other paragons of patience and persistence, watches with bated breath, or as much breath as a snail can bait. They're not just witnessing a race, they're seeing the embodiment of stoic virtues in action. Suddenly, a leafy hurdle appears on the track. Patience Pete pauses, contemplating the obstacle with the calm of a seasoned sage. With a gentle nudge of his shell, he surmounts the leaf, leaving the audience in awe of his composure, under pressure. Meanwhile, persistence Polly presses on, undeterred by the barrier, a testament to her unyielding spirit. The message is clear, steady progress, no matter the pace, will conquer all. As the race progresses, or should we say, persistently creeps along, the animation reveals humorous signs held by the spectators. Go at your own pace. It's not the speed, but the direction. Rome wasn't built in a day, and this race won't finish in one either. Each sign a loving nod to the stoic principles guiding our hero's journey. The crossing of the finish line is imminent. The crossing of the finish line is imminent, though imminent, in snail terms, is relative. Patience Pete and Persistence Polly reach the end in a tie. For in this race, the victory isn't in being first, it's in the unwavering resolve to finish what one starts, a celebration of the virtues we've come to cherish. So, my patient viewers and persistent doers, as our snail race comes to a close, let's take with us the lessons of our mollusk mascots. In a world obsessed with speed and instant gratification, remember that patience and persistence are the silent superpowers that lead to lasting achievement and inner peace. If the tale of patience, Pete, and persistence, Polly, has inspired you to take life at your own meaningful pace, then show your tortoise, like approval with a slow and steady tap on that like button. Remember to subscribe for a continued dose of stoic storytelling, and gently press the notification bell. No need to rush. Join us for more stoic antics and insights, as we embrace the virtues that stand the test of time, proving that slow and steady truly does win the race. Consistency is key, and now my fellow seekers of wisdom, we arrive at a cornerstone of stoic practice. Consistency, it's the glue that holds our efforts together, ensuring that each step we take is firm and purposeful. But let's not just talk about consistency, let's make it engaging with a delightful consistency bingo activity because what's better than learning while having a bit of fun? Imagine a bingo board, each square representing an action or habit, aligned with stoic virtues. Instead of numbers, we have daily practices like morning reflection, act of kindness, stoic pause, and evening review. Our goal is to fill the board, but there's a twist. The only way to mark a square is by carrying out the corresponding stoic action, not just once, but consistently across several days or weeks. As you embark on this consistency bingo challenge, picture your animated sidekick, Bingo the Stoic Owl, perched on your shoulder. With each day you complete a task, Bingo hoots in approval, his feathers ruffling with pride. Miss a day? He tilts his head in that all-knowing owl way, reminding you that the path of the Stoic is a marathon, not a sprint, and gently encourages you to pick up where you left off. The beauty of this playful activity lies in its blend of light-hearted competition and profound lesson. Each square you fill is more than just moving closer to Bingo. It's a step towards ingraining the stoic disciplines into the fabric of your life. And with each consistent action, you reinforce the inner citadel, strengthening its walls against the tides of distraction and procrastination. Let's not forget the social aspect of our consistency bingo. Why not invite friends or fellow stoics to join in? Share your boards, celebrate each other's victories, and perhaps even add a communal square. Help a fellow stoics because growth shared is growth doubled. And so, dear students of life, as we fill our boards with the marks of diligently repeated actions, we discover the heart of stoic practice. It's not about ticking off a single grand gesture, but about the small repeated steps that culminate in a profound transformation. If the idea of consistency bingo has sparked a flame of excitement in your stoic spirit, and you're ready to mark your squares with steadfast dedication, Show your commitment by giving that like button the triumphant click.
subscribe to our channel for your regular rendezvous with ancient wisdom, and ring the notification bell with the precision of a stoic marking their bingo card. Let's continue to weave the thread of consistency through the tapestry of our lives, playing our way to a more disciplined, joyful, and stoic existence, as the sun dips below the horizon, and we reach the end of our stoic journey for today. Let's take a moment to reflect on the profound wisdom we've uncovered together. We've explored the time, tested strategies of stoicism, from the bedrock of the inner citadel to the daily practice of consistency bingo, all designed to bolster our white power and amplify our self-discipline. We've laughed with patience, Pete and persistence Polly in their snail race, cheered on by Bingo the Stoic Owl as we filled our bingo cards with consistent deeds. We've taken icy plunges with the Stoic Ice Bath Challenge, and we've navigated the twists and turns of willpower with our trusty mechanic, Willpower Willy, watching the fuel gauge of our determination. But my friends, this is not just an ending. It's an invitation, a call to action. Take these teachings and weave them into the fabric of your life. Embrace the challenges, for they are but stepping stones on your path to growth. Celebrate your victories, no matter how small, and remember that every moment of patience, every act of persistence, is a triumph in the stoic quest for excellence. As you step into tomorrow, armed with the lessons of Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius, Remember that your journey is uniquely yours. Your inner citadel awaits, fortified not by stone, but by the very virtues we've discussed. And though our time together today concludes, the practices we've shared are just beginning to take root in your life. Now, before you go, let's hear from you. Drop a comment sharing your favorite stoic practice, or perhaps a challenge you're excited to tackle with your newfound perspective. Share this video with fellow seekers who might too find solace and strength in the stoic way. Your engagement helps our community grow and flourish, just as these ancient principles help you thrive in the modern world. If you haven't already, smash that like button with the might of a gladiator. Subscribe to our channel for more empowering content, and ring the notification bell with the enthusiasm of a stoic facing a new day. Join us again as we continue to unravel the timeless wisdom of stoicism transforming trials into triumphs and obstacles into opportunities. Together, let's build unshakable willpower and invincible self-discipline. Let the words of the Stoics illuminate our path, and may we stride forward with confidence, courage, and a dash of humor. Until next time, stay strong, stay wise, and stay Stoic.